Hey there, let's go over this statics problem. I helped um, one of my tutoring students with this one and I thought it would be a good one for um, YouTube. So this one is similar to a chapter five problem in the Hibbler text. So if you're in the 15th edition, it's like number 523 out of Hibbler. And that's the statics book. Okay, so the only thing different here is we've got a little bit of wording differences and the numbers are different. So pin B is here and it can support a load of up to nine kilonewtons. Roller A over here can support a load up to five kilonewtons and we wanna calculate the max distributed load W in kilonewton per meter uh, before either the pin or roller exceeds the max allowable load. Okay, so we have two conditions here that we have to make sure we meet. We can't go beyond nine for the pin and we can't go beyond A for the, can't go beyond five for roller A. Okay, so keep that in mind as we work through this. This is an equilibrium problem. So I wanna go through and I wanna draw the free body diagram. So let's do that first. Just say it looks like that. And then let's put our forces on here. First of all, we've got a pin. All right, so a pin always has an X and a Y component. So we're gonna have BY, BX. I just chose those directions. I have no idea if they are right or not. And then we've got this distributed load, All right? Now I don't know what W is, right? W is what we're trying to look for. But I do know this is four meters long. So what I'm gonna do is put this right here and we'll have four times W. Now remember with a distributed load, the load is gonna act at the center of the, the uniform area here. So right here would be two meters from point B and then you know two meters to where the beam bends, okay? So we've got that, and then last thing we have the roller. Now which way should I put the roller? Well, it's gotta be perpendicular to the roller, right? So it's gonna be just like that. Okay, so now you have that, and let's call that N. Okay. This right here is 30 degrees, and then this length here is three, and that's meters. Okay, now we need to know what angle this is at if we are considering our regular XY frame, right? Now, the way I always do this, and I've put this on here before, is I always draw the regular Cartesian frame and then I draw one that's rotated and then I kind of match up what I'm given and then match up my force and that'll help me. So I'm given this 30 degree angle, right? So if I come up here and find the matching region that's like right there right because we have the horizontal and then a line going off at 30 degrees now let's find the line that matches in well that's going to be this one right here right so now you just go around um, and then find your angle so notice between this line and this line it has to be 90 degrees so this would be 60 and then between this one and this one so the negative x negative y that has to be 90, so this has to be 30. Okay, so we've got that, and we can include those angles on here. So this one would be 60, that one there would be 30. All right, it's hard to see, but, but that's 30 there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start doing our equilibrium equations, because we have all the stuff that we need now. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a moment equation first, just because that gets rid of BX and BY. So let's do that. Let's do a moment about B. Right, counterclockwise is positive. So let's just start with four W. So with this one, if I hold this fixed at B and I rotate it, it's gonna be counterclockwise, right? So that's gonna be a positive moment. And the distance from here to here is two, right? That two is that perpendicular distance. Now over here, I've got N. Okay, now N is at an angle and it's got components, right? So it's got this component here and then it's got a Y component there, right? So both of these are gonna have moments relative to B. So we have to look at both of them. So this element up here, this X component, that's gonna be N cosine 60, right? Because it's adjacent to 60. And this one right here would be N 
sine 60 or you could do cosine 30 it gives you the same thing all right now let's find the moments for those so let's do the n cosine 60. so n cosine 60 i need a vertical distance because this is horizontal force right perpendicular distance would be vertical so i need to go from here to here so what would that distance be well if we look over here because it's easier to see we basically need from here to here right this is three meters so that means this length here is three sine 30 right so that'll be our distance for that all right so now we have that and it's so going to be positive or negative well i'm thinking it's going to be negative right because if i have this held on at b where it can just rotate if I push it that way, it's going to go clockwise, so it's going to be a negative. And then we need to do the same thing with this y component. Okay, so force is going to be n sine 60, and this is a horizontal, or not horizontal, this is a vertical force, so I need a horizontal distance. So I need to go from here to over here. So that then has to be the 2 plus 2 plus this x component here you know from here to here okay so this component here since this is three this has to be three cosine 30 because this is adjacent to 30. so we'll have two plus two plus three cosine 30. and then check your sign so again this is pushing up that's going to be clockwise so it's negative okay and then set it to zero now if we go through and simplify a little bit, we're going to have 8w uh, minus 0.75n and then minus 5.72n equals 0. Now at this point, a lot of times people would want to plug in the value that was given for the roller at A, right, which is n. Okay, so they would see that, oh, roller A can support 5 kilonewtons, so let's plug 5 in. But the thing here is that we have two conditions. Okay, so there's nothing stating in here that the roller at A and the pin at B are both at their max support conditions, right? It doesn't say that anywhere. So we don't want to go ahead and plug in five, right? Because then we don't, we don't have enough information to know that at this point. So let's just leave N alone and let's get an equation for N as a function of W. And then you'll see what we'll do with it in just a little bit. Okay, so group these two together and then um, you know solve for n, and we're gonna get n is 1.237 w. Okay, and let's hang on to that. Now let's look at the x and y directions. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's do bx, I guess. Let's do the x direction. Okay, so everything in the x direction, I got positive bx because it's to the right. And then I've got this x component here, which is positive. So plus n cosine 60. And then that's going to equal 0. All right. Now remember, we're looking for w. So if I take this and I plug it in here, now I can get bx in terms of w. Right, so we just do the 1.237 times cosine 60, and then we have the w here. So we're going to have bx is negative 0.6185w. And then we have one more unknown, which is by, so let's go ahead and do some of the forces in the y direction. Okay, so we're going to have n sine 60 from here, minus 4w. And then plus by equals zero. And then you probably guessed it. We're going to plug in the 1.237w for n. Okay. So both of these terms will have w. So we can go ahead and um, group up those terms and move them over to the other side. And we'll get that by is 2.93w. Okay, so now we've got everything in terms of W, all right? 
and we got to figure out what the max load W can be and still meet these requirements. All right, so first of all, let's look at what was given for the pin. So it says it, pin B can support a load of nine kilonewtons. Nine kilonewtons is a magnitude, right? So let's write that down. So that's a magnitude. Now I've got these separate components for B, but they're not a magnitude. So what I need to do then is let's find the magnitude for B, okay? So let's do the square root of BX squared plus BY squared. All right, so let's square BX and then the 2.93W, let's square that. And then do the square root, okay? So if we do that, we end up getting 2.995W. So this is the magnitude of the support at pin B in terms of W. And then I've got the normal force here from the roller in terms of W. So now we gotta figure out what W can be, okay? So let's just keep working with the pin since we just finished that. So pin B can support a load up to nine kilonewtons. So that means that this magnitude here has to be less than or equal to nine, right? So we'll have 2.995W less than or equal to nine kilonewtons. All right, and then let's solve for W. So W is going to be 3.005 kilonewton meters. So this is what we can have for the pen before we have failure. Okay, now let's look at the roller. All right, so the roller, we have this force here, and we know we can go up to five kilonewtons. So I know 1.237W has to be less than or equal to five kilonewtons. And then solve for W here. All right, so if we solve for W here, we get 4.04 .04 kilonewton meters. So we have two options. So which one would we pick? Well, let's think about it. If I had 4.04 .04 kilonewton meters, that meets the roller's requirement, but does it meet the pin requirement? No, because this one could only be 3.005, right? So what we want to do is when we're finding the max W is we want to pick the lowest value because once we go beyond this value, we will have failure in the pin, okay? So that's why we pick the lowest value. Let's write a little note. Okay, so remember, when we're looking for the max W, we're gonna pick the minimum. And that's if we're given more than one um, force condition like we had here. All right, hopefully y'all found that one helpful, and I will see y'all again next time.